Hi, thanks for joining me in Wilderness of the Monty. Down did some fly fishing in the back of Fontanellas and I got some nice, couple nice brookies. But I didn't get anything big, so I've been carrying my spinning rod around for about five or six weeks now and I haven't used it. So I put on a tube jig and I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna fish this jig in that deep, in those deep sections over there. And I'm gonna let it get way down there and I'm gonna see if there's any big brookies hanging out. I failed to get the big one on my fly rod here. Let's see if we can get a bigger brookie with this tube jig fishing deep. I'm fishing a 1 16th ounce tube jig. That should get me down there pretty quick. The wind is kind of bad, but it is what it is. Can't do much about the wind. When I was rigging up, I did see a school of brookies come through here but they're really hard to see because of the wind. So I'm gonna fish this jig through this shallow stuff right here, and then I'm gonna go fish these two deep sections here. See if we can't pick up something a little bit better than before. Brookie, he swam right up out of the depths. He grabbed that. This is the kind of brookie I was looking for. Oh, get him in the net. Come on, come on. We got him, got him. Best brookie of the day, just came on a jig. Get both my hands wet for this guy. But look at that fat brook trout. That's a nice brook trout right there, man. Like Lake Fontanellis coming through on the jig. There he goes, man. That was that was awesome. I've been fly fishing for you know a few hours. I got some fish, but I didn't get anything like that. And I saw him come up and get it. Like I set the hook on him, man. That was a great, that was a great catch. That's the size fish I've been looking for. You know, they get bigger than that in here, but that's a good brookie for Fontanellas. And if I could beat that, that would be exceptional, but I'm not counting on it. And I'm just letting this thing sink. I'm gonna go over here to this deep water and I'm really gonna let it sink. This 116 ounce jig is a little easier to battle this wind with. But it's really hard to detect strikes on the sink because there's such a big bow in the line. All you can do is watch it. If you see your line go out at all, at all, you just got to set the hook. And that's all you can do because I want to get this jig down deep. And it's really deep drop off right here. And I want to get it down, down in there into the fathoms and see, see if I can't get some kind of a big brookie to come up. And a school of brookies swam by and there were two big ones in it and I got one of the small ones. They're on this jig though. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> this jig is smoking hot. Sometimes they're not into it. Today they're just into it. I don't know what, what the formula is or what the water's a certain temperature or they just, they're, they're tired of flies. I don't know. But nothing's feeding on the surface. So, if I can get them to hit these jigs, and, that, and those guys, they're cruising this rock wall. And I, and I was fishing out deep, and right when my jig got up by the rock wall, I saw, and I saw a big one going for it, man. And, and uh, the big one lost out. That little pesky one got it. They're on these jigs. A lot more than they were that fly rod. And you, lately the jigs just haven't been working. It's <laughs> just today they just happen to be working. And they're yielding big, nice, fat brookies. I'm just fishing this deep water. This guy was down deep. Just gotta get my hand wet and take a look at him. I mean, all these fish are good size. Look at that. I just lost another one. And I'm using this, uh, the dark gray with the red specks, power bait tube jig. And they're, they're hitting this thing like crazy. And, and I was starting to lose confidence in it because I tried it in a bunch of lakes. You know, I'd make, you know, five, six, 10 casts and just nothing. And they're just, for whatever reason, they're on this thing right now. I was just, uh, I let that thing, so I'm letting it sink way down there. I'm watching my line. 
if I see it go, because they'll hit it when it's sinking. And I want to let it get way down there. I'm going to fish different depths. But the fish are cruising down deep. And But they'll come up. So if you don't have to get all the way to the bottom. You just got to get deep enough where they can see it. You know, like five feet from the bottom. So what I do is I count until I hit the bottom. And if it's a 40 count, then I start my retrieves at about 35 count. And then that way I'm, I'm operating just above the bottom and not on the bottom. Feels good to have my spinning rod in my hand again. Actually, I just fished the truck yesterday. <laughs> For what it is with the Monty Patreon. Ooh, there's one down there. I can see him flashing. I can see him flashing. There he is. Oh, oh. Will he come back? Will he come back? Oh, oh. Oh, I, I pulled it right out of his mouth. Oh, I pulled it out of his mouth again. There we go. There we go. He came back three times for it. I could see his white belly way down there flashing for it. I mean, these fish are like at 20, man. They're way down there. And that's what I like to have my jig option for. Because if I couldn't get anything on my fly rod, I could always bust out my jig option and I'm really effective at fishing jigs down deep and and sometimes some of the biggest brookies you're going to catch are going to be down deep and there he is that's a nice brook trout you get back in there you be causing no trouble by trouble I mean not biting the cool thing is here the water is so clear and I can just faintly see the belly, like you can see something down there. You know something's going on. And then you just, you know, you just, you just got to kind of time it and set the hook. And that fish was so aggressive. And I mean, I was throwing that woolly bugger forever. And they just were not into it for whatever reason. I mean, I got a couple. But they're not into it like this jig. And I was fishing this jig here last time I was here, and I wasn't getting anything on it. Same jig, same spot. I got my my chin strap on to keep my hat from flying away. Your hat flies off right here. It's going to be at the other side of the lake. It's crazy. I'm casting it out with this heavy wind, and even though there's a big bow in my line, I just missed the hook set. I, I just looked and just saw my line had a big bow and I just saw my line go big big. It just it just ding ding and I went to set the hook and I just missed it. But you can see the strike. It isn't easy, but it, after you do this for a while, the more you do it, the better you'll get at detecting those strikes on the sink. Especially when it's windy like this, it's very tough. With 132 ounce jigs, good luck. One sixteenth ounce jigs that can get me down there and it gives me enough contact even in the high wind where I can I can get some things done. Out of the depths. It was way down there. Another nice one. I keep constant pressure. I never stop reeling because with this barbless jig, it can pop out in two seconds. It's so easy. The second there's no pressure. Ooh, that's another good one, man. Look at that brook trout right there. Huh? What do you think about that brookie? That's a nice brookie right there. And I can't reach these with my fly rod. This, this water I'm fishing right here is really deep. So I got to get way down there with my jig. And it's working, like a, it's working like a magic wand right now. And I'm loving it. I almost just said, ah, I'm going home. I got to hike five miles. I got to drive. And I got to take a nap before I drive. And I was going to give up and... It's always right, it's always when I'm about to give up. Sometimes I crack the code. I use a five foot ultralight rod, it's really sensitive. So sometimes I'll just feel a dink, you'll feel it just, just barely. It feels like a really small fish is just dink dink, but it's not a small fish. It's a big brookie that just swims up and inhales the thing. And that's what I'm looking for, man. I'm looking for inhalation. <laughs> full, I'm looking for full jig inhale. Oh, 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 oh. He was trying to inhale it, but I pulled it away. I saw his flash. He was way down there. There he is. He came back up for it. He came back up for it. He was way down there. 
And again, I just keep reeling, I keep the pressure on. And when you're fishing these barbless jigs like this, and if you don't make these things barbless, man, you're gonna kill these fish. You know, it's just, it's, it's a bummer. Because the barb will just tear them up, tear up their jaws, tear up their gills. But these barbless jigs come right out. The quality of the fish has just gone way up. Because <laughs> I'm just, I'm going down and I'm getting them where they're, where they're hanging out. And they're hanging out down deep. And that's another, that is another great brookie. And that's why I have no problems hiking five miles day hiking to this lake. So when I'm seeing these fish, I'm throwing it way out there. I'm letting it sink. I'm bouncing it in. Some of the contact I'm getting is out there. But a lot of it is I, I get it down deep right at the base of this straight drop off. And then I start bringing it up the wall. And then I see them coming up the wall or I see them flash way down deep at the, at the down in there. And that's, I miss a lot of strikes like, cause I get a little over anxious. <gasps> <gasps> and I just start setting the hook, <laughs> but <laughs> it works out enough where I'm, I'm, I'm okay with what's going on. Camera, camera came out a little late on that one. <laughs> I threw it way out there and my line stopped like moving, like it was sinking and then it all of a sudden it shot a little bit. So I, set, I went to set the hook and there was a fish there. So I, I just gave it a little pull like that and then it pulled it away, but then he followed it and followed it. By the time he finally took it again, he really wasn't that excited about it. So, so I set the hook, but it wasn't a really good hook set. I'm feeling really spoiled because I've only been doing this for about 20 minutes and I'm just getting one hit after another. And I'm to the point now where if my jig's down deep and I bring it up out of the depths and there's not a, a colorful body following it, then I'm disappointed. I'm just completely spoiled. So I should probably quit while I'm ahead. And that way I can leave feeling good. So once you get your jig out there, the wind is really blowing like this. I'll get my line close to the, I'll get my rod tip close to the water. And you can see that small loop bow. And you'll see the hit in that bow. It'll just be like, boom, boom. And being able to watch a line like that's really helpful when you're bait fishing too, because you can see strikes long before the fish takes it. That's gonna do it. I gotta try to nap it out for like 20 minutes. I, I didn't sleep well in my car last night and I gotta drive home after I hike out for two hours. So it's already two o'clock. I figure if I can get back to my car by five with a good nap, Takes me about two hours of hard hiking to get out of here. I should be able to get home by the second half of the That's my goal. I'd like to watch the second half of the first day I get. I have priorities. So, this is great. I wish I started fishing the jig earlier. I, I started too late and uh, I, I wish I had more time to probe those depths because it's deep out there and I'm not going to come back till next year. So next year I'm going to spend more time on the jig, but you know, like I said, I was here like five weeks ago fishing for Patreon and I was doing the exact same thing and I got like a couple of hits, but it wasn't like it was today. So who knows, man? It's like witchcraft. And do I have the right spell today? Somebody tell me what spell I need, okay? I'll cast it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little bit of spinning rod fishing. Jigs down deep for some bigger brookies. Thanks for joining me on Wilderness with Imani. Until next time.